I'm Kerry Fink, and what a pleasure it is to welcome you guys to the program today. It's Jen Gotson and Jim E. Chandler. And I have to tell you, our family has so enjoyed The Farmer and the Bell, this new movie that's out this holiday season. It is fantastic. Oh, well, Kerry. that makes us smile. So <laughs> thank you so much for the support. We're glad that you and the wife both enjoyed it. Oh, my goodness. And this is great. It makes me want to eat lots of Christmas cookies to celebrate with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's such a time, you know, 2020 has been such an unusual year for so many people, because uh, if you'd woken us up on December uh, 31st, 2019, and said, let me tell you what all you're going <laughs> to confront in 2020, <laughs> we, 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 would, we would have an interesting reaction to that. But yet, you guys have really managed to bring uh, the best of, of what the Christmas season has to offer in this movie. I was looking at this article that Crosswalk did about it, and I can't really say it any better than they did. They said it's one of the best family movies of the year. And how do you guys, like, to somebody that's new to this, how do you explain the synopsis? Uh, it's a great story. And I, I'm telling you, if you're watching this, you gotta, it, we're gonna talk about how you can watch it, but how do you guys explain the synopsis of this? Absolutely. It is a fun family Christmas treat. And it starts with a little girl, my character, when she's young, gets this heirloom bracelet from Grammy telling her that beauty is on the inside. Well, she loses it at a pig farm called Santa Land. And now as an adult, she is this famous model at the end of her career. She's aging out. And she goes, you know what? I need to find that meaning of that bracelet. So she says, okay, I'm going to have to overcome my fears of uh, the goats, the chickens, the cows, the pigs, and her childhood pen pal, and go back to find her bracelet at Santa Land. And then through it, she has to discern, do I look to that spark of divinity for my value or back to the glitz and glam of the fashion world? It really pulls in both directions, doesn't it? You know, we're, we're taught in the Bible, we're to be in the world and not of the world. And I think that's one of the things that's so amazing about the lesson the movie teaches. And uh, I love, again, what Crosswalk said. They, they, I can't say it better. They said it's a, uh, this romantic film isn't a Hallmark film, but it has a similar look and feel. It has all that entertainment value. It's, it's a funny, it's uplifting. It says the acting is impressive. But it, you know, what I loved about it when I dug further was it's based on a true story. You guys are a married couple and you're playing the married couple in the movie. That had to be an amazing experience. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, that's a crosswalk that really kind of couldn't have said it better uh, than we were trying to do with the film is that we wanted people to have that feeling of like, oh, this is that nice romantic movie where the two, the, the couple goes on that journey together and the decorations are nice. But then we wanted to add those things that you may not see, like somebody falling down in mud or a horse <laughs> in a pink onesie in the Flatiron <laughs> District of New York City or, you know, just being that portion of let's talk about something serious about where does our, my value come from and where am I getting my value from and how do I become beautiful and we believe that that's by doing acts of love so we wanted to see Belle struggle with that so that she does have to make that tough choice is that am I going to go running back to New York where I'm comfortable or am I going to face these difficult questions that that need to be faced for not only for Belle but for a lot of people in our lives and, and, and women in our lives that uh, need to take a look at those mm -hmm. things. So we were really, really thrilled to be able to sneak, have that message mm -hmm. in, which kind of pulled us out of that Hallmark uh, box a little bit, <laughs> but we're very thrilled with how everything turned out. And Carrie, we worked with psychologists from Focus on the Family, Greg and Aaron Smalley, that you might be really familiar with. And she helped me understand that we are a magnificent masterpiece and that um, as it tells us in Psalms, our body and soul are marvelously made. And then one of the other charms that Jim spoke about, uh, we focus on First Peter, which is to use whatever gift you receive to serve others. And when we do that joyfully, it's like Christ calls us to love one another as he loves us. And when that joy comes through us, that really is one of the most beautiful features that is even more beautiful than having the right mascara or lipstick or hairstyle. It's when you have that joy. You know, that was the thing that I was thinking about. Uh, also- Mascara as, and lipstick? No. No, no, I was gonna say is the fact that like in a Hallmark movie, everybody looks for that happy, they lived happily ever after kind of ending. But what's, what's so interesting is in the movie, um, and again, 
quoting from the Crosswalk article, has a much needed message about beauty. All too often, we're caught up in, um, you know, I would say glitz and glam, and particularly now with all the access to social media, we've all learned how to be, quote, beautiful on camera, right? We figured out if we hold the, the phone in the right way, it gets us from the best side and all that. And all that's a great that's great technique to have, but there's a whole lot more to all of it than that. And I think that's a theme that is so important because uh, for people that may not feel like they're good enough or they, no matter how hard they try, they can't achieve that quote perfection. I mean, I think this is a, a point that the movie brings home beautifully. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah, something that is important. And I'm glad you brought up that point is that, you know, there are young women and girls right now that are using Insta Instagram and different filtering applications that create an image of themselves that isn't real. And then they post that image as if it's real and trying to get those likes, those thumbs up and that adoration and those comments. Um, and all the while they're presenting something that is fake, which is why we believe that the beauty, uh, there's nothing wrong with wanting to make yourself look good. There, there's not something inherently wrong with that or to be healthy or anything like that. But when we derive our value from that, that's what we wanted to combat, which is why we put the focus on on the action of being beautiful, which is what she just described, doing acts of love, you know, uh, oh, being obedient to your calling, being a joyful giver when you're interacting with other people. That th th that's the best way that we can become beautiful in addition to those uh, aesthetic things, if you will. And in the, in the movie, you'll see my character with all these modeling images. Yeah. Harry, those are real. Those are from my modeling campaign in China. And Brother Zhen, the makeup artist, he is a celebrity makeup artist and I'm the face of his brand. And I say that because I know what I looked like when they took those pictures. And when they gave them back, I was like, whoa, Photoshop, lifting my eyes, making my face thinner, changing my complexion. And uh, when I was there, I never modeled before. I'm five foot short. And um, I remember feeling out of my skin and feeling ugly and just really like awkward, which I learned 90% of girls feel, 90% starting at a very young age. We hear I lies, I'm not pretty enough, yeah. See, that's what's so important about this because that's the fourth point that Crosswalk.com uh, brings up in their review of the movie. They say it's a must watch for Christian teens because, you know, we think it's, uh, when we're a little older, we have a perspective because we grew up in a day before an iPad and an iPhone. And those things have only been around basically a dozen years now. But if you're a young person growing up, this is all you know. And if somebody isn't sharing with you that God has put a whole lot more into you than just whatever your physical uh, beauty and physical appearance can, can, can become, which like you said, is fine, but there's a whole lot more to a person. And that's what you guys dig into the movie, but it's also what's about your ministry. And I was going to say, you have a great website uh, that's called uh, the farmer and the bell.net the farmer and the bell.net and there's much more to it because you can access the movie there but then you have a lot of learning and teaching tools in there as well right yeah we do we as part of the development of it jen uh, uh it's hard to show yeah, it's, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> we talked about the bracelet and being a part of the story um and it's selling on qvc right now it is yeah inspired by a Tiffany style chain with very on trend Alex and Ani style charms, which again relates to that teen audience. And then uh, Michelle Cox who writes for When Calls the Heart, she and I wrote a devotional taking that psychology and saying, how do I transform my mind from those lies? So when you feel not pretty enough and you're not getting those likes, you're not getting those comments on you're beautiful and all these things, I want your friends who are watching this right now to do what the psychologists and pastors taught me. You hold that lie captive. And now you want to renew your mind and you want to say the truths from Psalms, my body and my soul are marvelously made. I am a magnificent masterpiece because I am made in the image of God. I am to use whatever gift God has given me to serve others. And when I do that joyfully, that will radiate this love. And to know, to pray, Jesus, help me grasp how wide, high, long, and deep is your love for me. And when you experience those truths, you truly will overcome that self-negative thought from if you're a more mature woman struggling with aging, 
or your jaw is dropping or um, your team going, I need to fit in. And that's why we, we put it on here to be as a keepsake and the heart you hold in the palm of your hand as if you're holding onto Jesus. So at least that's what I do. As uh, Aaron Smalley said, you have to have an open heart uh, to be able to have that growth. Yeah. And so the other products on the website that you were mentioning is, is uh, we have the Mike Narwaki book or now Rocky, I should say. Uh, he could create a veggie tales for the youngster. So people under 10 can kind of get the idea of what it means to be beautiful, which is to, again, doing that action word of beauty. And then we also have t-shirts and like our soundtrack, which is all original songs, which is a lot of fun too. So there's a <laughs> lot of different ways that people can get that we're sharing this message of inner beauty and, uh, and yeah. Uh, and yeah. we have a video Bible study that I lead as well. So mm -hmm. girl, teen girls, uh, we can get together and we can go through the devotional week by week by week with call out action items to really be able to just take these concepts that are proven. We did test groups. They work to be able to really help people. And all this, I assume you can access by going to the farmer and the bell Net. And we'll make sure we put that up on the screen as well. Yeah, absolutely. But I wanted to ask you guys, kind of like as we get 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 towards a wrap-up moment, you know, this movie would have been such a great movie to be in a theater eating popcorn and, and just enjoying with the family during this time of year. This had to be like a real uh, complicated maneuver for you guys to shift everything. Uh, but the beautiful thing is I think you're going to reach people with this message and God will work it out in a way that it gets in front of the people that it's going to, I think it's going to impact lives and save lives when people uh, can open their eyes and see that there is, uh, I think I just totally agree with it, said a much must watch for Christian teens. So if you're a parent, maybe you're a grandparent, maybe you're a person that's thinking like, what can I do to impact that, uh, that person in my life who's growing up? Just the ability to be able to access this kind of quality Christian material uh, is terrific at, at the farmer and the bell.net. But how was it for you guys to have to make that kind of a turn from thinking one direction to reaching out people directly? Yeah, well, we wanted to go uh, to small town mom and pop theaters because it's got that homey, fun country feel. And then our company that we were partnering with, they had to close because of COVID. <sighs> And so we had to decide, we have an amazing distribution team. They're phenomenal, Vision Films and Mill Creek. And they said, let's just go on out on all the streaming platforms where people feel safe at home. They could go to Amazon, to iTunes, to YouTube, to all the different platforms that you watch, you know, your content, cable providers, on demand, dish. Yeah. So we were able to, you know, put it into the different countries that wanted to do, uh, wanted to, the, the, the acquired it. And uh, we just did it all at the same time. The books came out, the, the, the DVD, the soundtrack, everything just released all at once. And we kind of flooded the market right after the election, right when everybody could use it, <laughs> you know, it is like, Holy cow, I have election Ooh. fatigue. And I think that that's part of the reason why we've gotten such a great response is that it's such an opposite uh, type of movie than what we've been dealing with because everything's been so drub and dreary. And nowadays, a lot of entertainment th these days yeah. um, is very dystopian. Mm. And, you know, it's it, it can be, you know, maybe interesting or, or kind of fun to watch. But, you know, when mm. it starts to feel like it's happening in real life, like we need something a little bit different. And I think that that's <laughs> what we've been able to do and to be an independent film and have the, the success that we've been enjoying yes. so far is all a testament to our team and ultimately God's hand. Amen. And it. it's been one of my prayers uh, when making this, I wanted it to be a family tradition to usher in that spirit of Christmas. And we've received messages from people we don't know saying our family, our little kiddos, they just want to watch the movie over and over. We've seen it like four to five times already. And then some people have told us that it's their new favorite Christmas movie. And of course it's, we want to be that blessing in people's lives. And that's why we have a horse in a pink onesie with heels in the middle of Manhattan. That's why we have Santa Land games where the contestants are wearing uh, presents on their head or putting Santa hats on pigs. Uh, that's why we have John Schneider singing a fun concert scene with Becca Shea, Christmas concert, and all these little different nuances through the film to keep us laughing. And I think one of my favorite scenes is the nativity scene where my character <laughs> literally yes. takes oh go ahead yeah she well you have to watch the movie to see why she does it but she <laughs> actually she decides to do some self-sacrifice for the nativity scene and it's a very funny moment but also touching all at the same time because <laughs> you get to see how she interacts with the kiddos yeah, it is such an instant Christmas classic. And, you know, the, we need that kind of uh, uh, just a fun, good 
uh, family enjoyable film, but with a great message and a great purpose behind it, especially in 2020. But, you know, I'm excited uh, that I really believe next Christmas they've got vaccines coming, all kinds of things. We're going to be sitting in a theater watching this movie uh, next de next December as we get to it. But make sure this Christmas that you get to the farmer and the bell .net, find out how to access your copy of this movie and maybe some of the great tools, uh, both ministry and just the beautiful jewelry that you guys have as well, uh, because you you'll find out how important that bracelet is in this in this entire movie. And I just yeah. want to thank you guys. I know you have a million things to do this holiday season, but thank you for taking time to join us and talk a little, a little bit about this great movie. Uh, it's been a pleasure, Jen Gotson and Jim E. Chandler, to have you guest with us, and I, I hope you'll come back. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's a blessing to be able to be able to be interviewed by all these different outlets. It's been it's been a joy, and we're so thankful to everybody that's interested in the film and for what God's doing with it. So, and thank Carrie, you, Carrie. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the love that you have for all those that you shepherd. You are the voice and the light in their lives, and we're just so grateful for you. And thank you, guys. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry everyone. Christmas. <laughs>